Santee Cooper has been generating reliable, affordable, and renewable electricity for 80 years. Power began flowing on February 17, 1942, when the first unit at Jeffrey's Hydroelectric Station came online. A milestone more than a decade in the making and accelerated by President Franklin Roosevelt as the United States entered World War II. Then called the Pinopolis Power Plant, the stately Art Deco station gained significant national attention when Roosevelt named it a national defense project. Nearly 65,000 people came to view the incredible achievement before and just after the hydroelectric station came online. It was accelerated the startup of the plant to feed power to Pittsburgh Metallurgical Company to make ferrochromium alloy for armor plating for, for tanks and ships. Uh, operators here took a lot of pride in showing this place off. And so the design was beautiful inside and out. It was a show place. By the time all five units were online later in 1942, Jeffries could produce 128 megawatts of electricity. Updates to two of the units in 2016 increased that capacity to 140 megawatts, enough to power 65,000 homes. Jeffries delivered more than electricity to South Carolina, though. It also brought flood control, disease control, and interstate navigation that is still used today. Sandy Cooper was started along with other projects to pick up jobs for this country and for particular in South Carolina and in Berkeley County and to improve the quality of life of the residents of the state of South Carolina overall, still the mission today. Jeffries has survived floods, droughts, hurricanes, and ice storms over the past eight decades. But most people who worked there at the time would probably say the biggest challenge came on July 6, 1983. On that day, the Pinopolis Dam sprung a leak that threatened to erode part of the structure. Workers quickly identified the problem and fixed it. And it was unbelievable. It was national significance. Helicopters on the national news flying around, everybody trying to figure out how to stop the flood because they thought it, at first it was a leak in the dam which it was, but it was a man-made leak. So it was a big deal. And eventually, finally, 20-something hours later, after evacuations, we were able to put a stop log in and get the water flow cut off. Cooper lakes were created to provide water to fuel the hydro units. The lakes stand today as the state's largest freshwater resource and an important tourism draw. Tourism was a big byproduct for the economy around the local area and in the state. National significance, fishing tournaments, BASS comes. We have a big deal. Another benefit of the, the hydro project that wouldn't have even been considered 80 years ago was the clean drinking water it can provide. And now, of course, we have two water treatment plants that have been built and provide clean water to thousands of customers. Times changed over 80 years and Jeffries adapted, seeing changes of its own. So what, one of the reasons that I think Jeffries has been around for 80 years is, is the people. We've got an employee whose grandfather worked on um, the land clearing. Um, he has a young teenager, worked with his father to help clear the land. And when you have people like that, it's personal to them. And so, you know, when they come to work every day, they understand the mission, they understand why the site's here, and you see that in the work they provide. And 80 years ago, this was Santee Cooper Generation. And now, with different requirements, we basically are peak shaving units that run at the right times of day and only can flow a certain amount. And if you look at the navigational lock, it was built for, you know, commerce to get barges through. Now we maybe have one or two barges a year and it's shifted to, it's for recreational use and it's for fish passage. So this place, it's, its role has changed over the last 80 years, but it's no less critical to Santee Cooper's mission today than it was then. 